been trying to train myself. Go each morning, get a little scripture, and chew on it all day long. Because how you start a day, that's how it's going to end up. I mean, there may be things that will happen throughout the day, but because you got that foundation underneath you, see, you can go through it with flying colors. So if you would, stand up this evening. And we'll go to the Lord. Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, that when we fail you, you've never failed us. And we just want to praise you this evening. And thank you, Father God, for everything you have done. Thank you just for loving us, Lord. I can't say that enough because you loved us when we was yet unlovable. And I just want to praise you this evening. And we just want to worship you and praise you. And thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen.
do believe there's a changing going on. I know it's going on in me. Because I know good and well. I used to be so nervous. Whenever I'd come up here and get behind this piano, Jackie just wouldn't know how nervous I was. But you know what? When the power of God come into me one day, I could just tell you right where it was. And all of a sudden, I got a boldness come up inside of me. And the boldness is, is coming up in all of us, not just me, but it's coming up in all of us. And when it, whenever it's coming up, you know, we're going to have the same heart that the other people have. And that heart is going to be beaten as one. And it's going to come unto Christ because we know who we are. When we know who we are, then... See? 
Hallelujah. You're finding out. other day and uh, you know uh, if anybody would want to kind of spy on us every once in a while uh, they look through the window we start dancing <laughs> we dance mm -hmm. we put on some music and Betty just dance and dance and dance so I, I started uh, playing that song to Kathy she started singing first time she had sang. I'm going to sing that when we get back out there. It just goes, doesn't it?
Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Give a big praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. It's on. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Gerald and Kathy. Give them a hand clap right there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, I witnessed a miracle today. We witness miracles every day. <clears throat> but today, uh, when I picked up my high school kids, I have to wait for them to come. Then they they come and get on the bus. And this really was a miracle. Some of those kids hadn't spoke to me in two years, which, I mean, I speak to them every day, but they had, some of them have spoke to me in two years. They got these things in their ears, and they get on with their phones, and they get on the bus, and that's. And I'm glad because they, they, you know, they can be different at times. But anyway, today they got on the bus, one right after the other, and every single one of them said, "Happy birthday, happy birthday." Now, how they knew that, I don't know. And I asked them, I said, Did "Revival break out on the other bus over there or something?" <laughs> but anyway, they every one of them told me, "Happy birthday." So thank you for all your birthday wishes. I'm 57 years young. 57 years ago, the Lord thought, you know what, I'm going to change the world. And here me and my old brother Paul came into the earth. So here we are. So wherever Paul is tonight, happy birthday to him. And, uh, you know, being a twin is good in one respect, but in another respect, it's not so good. Christmas, birthday, things of that nature, you have to split what you get, which we didn't get a lot, but we still split it. But anyway, I praise the Lord for that. Tammy is in Tampa, Florida. She drove not from Knoxville yesterday to Charlotte, uh, North Carolina with some people, then got on a plane today, flew to Tampa, Florida. She's in meetings right now. She hasn't been in meetings all day tomorrow. Gets back tomorrow night at uh, midnight and has to get back up and go to work Saturday, so pray, uh, Friday, so pray for her that she, uh, she has strength in her body. She misses being here. Also, we have some announcements to make. The announcement is... The baby shower for uh, Grady and Charity is Sunday, is that right? Two to four, if I get that right. It's uh, co-ed, whomsoever will can come and be here at the church. And also the 13th, is that right? November 13th is our Thanksgiving dinner. And we clear all the chairs out of here, set tables up, and uh, we have Thanksgiving dinner here. And on the, on the back back there is a list uh, for uh, uh, to bring food. So if you will, please sign up for that so we can have uh, food for everybody. So praise the Lord. I appreciate you all having service Sunday. Appreciate uh, Perry for taking care of service and, and everybody doing their part. Uh, we do appreciate that. Gerald and Kathy and Tammy and I were in uh, St. Clair, Missouri, and we really had a good time, and uh, we really did enjoy that. So thank you for allowing us to go and bless those people up there. But anyway, I don't want to be too long tonight. It's good to see the boys. Uh, I don't know why they didn't bring my presents tonight. Did y'all forget them? I didn't know about them. What? I tell you, I've been out the last minute. Well, I've been out the last minute, though. Just you being here is present enough. I didn't know the last minute. Yeah. I'm just joking about the presents. Just you being here is, is, is present enough. 57 whippings. 57 whippings? Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me ask you this question right here and see what you think about this. Now, I won't be too long, but let me start out with this right here. I'm so glad for the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am glad for it. Uh, what if, now watch this right here, and, uh, what, and I may go around the room and say, I, I'll, I'll, go, I'll do this first. What if he was known, recognized by the very worst thing you've ever done in your life? I'm not trying to take you back into your past, but I guess I am. Don't spend too much time trying to think about the worst thing you ever done in your life because, you know, that, that, that wouldn't be good. But what if you was known, recognized the rest of your days for the worst thing you ever done in your life? Denise, we'll start with you. What was the worst thing you ever done? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Never. I'm just, but just think, what, what, if you was put on, what if you was put on the spot like that and you was recognized by the very worst thing you ever done in your life the rest of your life. That'd be bad. Now, you know why that's not the case? 
I mean, it'd be one thing for people to recognize, or some people, some people will always hold that against you. But what, what if God recognized you for the rest of your life for the very worst, worst, worst thing you've ever done in your life? You know what, man? We would be in bad, bad shape. Now, here is where mercy comes in. I am so glad for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mercy forgave me, and grace helped me accept that forgiveness. Let me say this to you. I know, I know that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, but I believe that mercy showed up before grace ever showed up. That's just my personal opinion for that. But I'm glad, I'm glad that um, I'm not recognized for the very worst thing I've ever done in my life. Now, let me, let me say something about mercy. I'm going to talk about mercy just a little bit tonight. You know, we got a lot of problems in this earth. I'm not here to major on those, but I'm not here. I'm not here to focus on those, but. I think because, let me say it this way, I think because we have not understood the aspect of mercy and not been willing to give mercy, it's cost us. And it's cost a lot of other people. In just a few minutes, I'm going to take you over. Well, I, well we don't have the computer working here. I'll just sort of more tell you about it. I'm going to read a verse right in just a minute. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Ark of the Covenant. It was, it was a box. Now, I know most of you know what the Ark of the Covenant is because you've heard me talk about it before. It was a box. had two rings on this side, two rings on this side, and had sticks stuck in it. And the priest got under that thing and carried it. They carried that thing everywhere it went. David, when he got ready to bring the Ark back to Jerusalem after the Philistines had captured it, David, watch this now, carried that Ark back to Jerusalem the wrong way. And it got to Nacon's threshing floor. When it got to Nacon's threshing floor, the Lord shook that ark. And there was a preacher's son whose name was Uzzah. And I, he was trying to do a good thing, Margie. The ark got shook, and he loved the presence of God so much and was so excited about God coming back to Jerusalem. He didn't want that ark to fall off that cart. So what he did was he took his hand and stuck it up and touched that ark to study it. And the minute he touched it, bang, he fell dead. A couple things David had wrong here. Number one, he carried the ark back to Jerusalem the wrong way. That ark rec represents the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it represents mercy. The first thing that was wrong with that ark, that ark always covered with a, was, was carried with a blue cloth over it. The cloth was gone, so the ark was naked before the people. The second thing that was wrong with it, instead of priests carrying it, David had it up on a cart with oxen carrying it. And that ain't the way it's to be carried. It's to be carried up on the shoulders of the priest. So due to the fact that David carried the ark the wrong way, it caused a man to die. It caused a man to die, and it scared David. So David went back, and was, the Scripture says and it displeased David, and David went back and had him a pity party. Once he got over the pity party, he began to talk to God and found out how the ark had to come back. And once he brought the ark back the right way, honored the protocol of the ark, the ark came back, and a great party broke out in Jerusalem. Let me say this to you right here. We got people, and I don't mean to bring this up. We got too many people just dying. I cannot thank you of, I don't mean to harsh old bad feelings, but I cannot think of one day going by that I don't think about Cynthia and think the girl should be here. Not only that, Jason and our other loved ones. Now, see, we've bought into this thing that death is just a part of our covenant. Death is not a part of our covenant. I believe that we need to live, and we need to live a long time. I don't think sickness is a part of our covenant. I think, I think, I, th I know that life and health is to be a part of our covenant. And we didn't enjoy life, doggone it. I've had enough bad crap in my life. I'm ready to enjoy some good life and enjoy it healthy. Can somebody say amen? So I'm going to keep on preaching. This is new. I'm going to keep on preaching until we finally get a hold of it. So David brought the ark back the right way, and it party broke out. And it represents the mercy and the presence of God. Could it be? See, we carry the mercy and the presence of God ourselves. Could it be due to the fact that we are not carrying the presence or the ark of the Lord the right way? Could it be that we could be our own worst enemies? Everybody say mercy. Now, see, we want mercy as long as it's coming to us. But when it's pointing back towards somebody else that has offended us or bothered us, that's a different story. 
Watch what Jesus said, Luke chapter number six. You know, they always, and I've even done it myself, they always use a scripture in Luke 6, 38 when they're taking up offerings. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Shall men give unto your bosom and run over. And they'll use it at offering time. And when you read this scripture, Dennis, money is not even mentioned in this scripture. But, here, but here's what is mentioned. Watch what Jesus says. Be therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Now let me let me let me go back and talk about the little bus thing. Every one of those kids got on that bus and said, "Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday." Can I just take my heart out and show it to you just for a second? Happy birthday, except one kid. I had him last year when he was in middle school. He's different. Me and him butted heads over and over and over last year. Anybody else would have kicked the kid off the bus. It, it just He's just different. It's not a, how much, he's just a mean different. I mean, he said, he, he's mean. He's not, he's not mischievous, he's mean. He got on the bus. He was the last one to get on the bus, and he just looked at me like, hell or high water, I'm not telling you happy birthday. And when he went on by me, I wanted to go, me. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Don't sit on me here. Rain on my birthday. It's my birthday. You know what? Speak to me the other time. It's just my birthday. All these other kids made me happy. I wasn't even expecting They made me happy. And then he got on the bus and looked at me like, hmm. Yeah. I went, me. And I, mean, I didn't say it out loud. I just. And then, then we got down to let them off. And everyone I got off the bus, happy birthday. I, I, I mean, I know I'm making too much out of this, but ha, I'm trying to use the And I made my day. They ain't spoke to me up two years. Happy birthday. Happy, turn the happy, happy birthday. And this one kid, I've got off to the back, got on the bottom of the, got on the bottom of the step and looked back at me like, hey, I want to put that bus in park. And just give, I know, I'm, see, I can say stuff like this, Tammy ain't here. <laughs> just, I, I, you, And then, you know, his pants is hanging down about right here. I'm, I'm using this for an example. And, I'm, I'm, and then, then he, he, and I just thought, I did, as he walked off, I just thought, you know. And then I heard the Lord say, mercy. You know, they sometimes I wish they were certain things that wasn't in the Bible. And I heard this scripture say, be ye therefore merciful. Even as your father is merciful. And they sometimes say everybody wants to hear the Lord. See, every time I've ever heard the Lord, it's turned my world upside down. And I heard the Lord say, Speak to him. Well, I thought, I mean, when there's conversation, he's getting off the bus. We're in this conversation, and I, I don't want to speak to him. He didn't speak to me. Who's the bigger person here? See, sometimes here's what you've got to stand up who's the bigger person? He's a teenager that lives in a drug house. And I called his name and I said, I love you, man. He went, I know, this face look. And it wasn't that look. It was like, I can't believe you just said that. Well, you know, the other looks was the how, how dare you looks. This one was like, Really? See, here's what I'm saying is when you can get to that point of where, and I'm not all the way there yet, when you get to that point where you can release mercy instead of, see, I judged that boy all the way on that bus. I, I mean, and I felt like I had the right to. I, I was thinking, at least you could say happy birthday one time to me. Happy birthday. And, and, and I, am I making too much out of this? But see, I judged him the whole way down the road. And probably the truth of it is nobody's give the kid a break all down through the years. And see, sometimes here's where it's at. you got to put your big boy underwear on sometime and big girl underwear on sometime and be merciful to some people that you just flat out don't want to be merciful to. Because sometimes you feel like they, they are do what they need to get. Now, well, what if we always do what we needed to get? They wouldn't be a single one of us in this room right now. And that was because of the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what's happening here, Gerald, Gerald keeps talking about things changing, and it is changing. We're, we're, we're changing more to grace. We're changing more to, 
to mercy. But we can't give grace and mercy just to the ones we want to. We can't pick and choose. It's for every single person on the planet. You understand what I'm saying right there? So in the Old Testament, God began to build the tabernacle. And you've heard me say this so many times before, but I'm going to say it one more time. And he said, here's what I want you to do first. Build me a sanctuary that I may come and dwell among the people. Exodus 25, verse number 8. And the first thing he said to build was the innermost part of that tabernacle, and that was the Ark of that Covenant. He said, build it. Now, have I ever ever done this demonstration here before? How to carry the Ark? I have done it. Now, I know y'all saw it this way. Some hadn't seen it. Then see if we've got two brooms or two mops in that closet right there. That's going to be your stays. You've got this box called the Ark of the Covenant, And on top of it, now watch me right here. On top of it, you had a mercy seat. Can I borrow you and you just a second? Just one second right here. The mercy seat was what covered the Ark of the Covenant. You stand right there, Margie, like you're standing right there. You come here, Kelly, and stand right here. Face Margie. There you go. Hold them right there. Now, hold on right there a minute. Now, you, 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 he's not going to hit you. (laughs) You are a cherubim. How these cherubims did on top of this mercy seat, I wish we had that picture. They, they, they had their hands stretched like this right here toward each other. There. Now, this was the box. This was a lid. And these two cherubims sat on these lids. And what they did was they faced each other. And what God did was he came and he sat right down in between these cherubims on top of the mercy seat. Now, come here, Mr. Dennis. Who's never seen this demonstration before? Can I borrow you, Sean? Can I borrow you, Bill? Can I borrow you, Jack? Lori, have you seen this before? You have? Sharon, have you seen it before? Okay. Hey, oh, you ain't seen it. Well, come on up here. All right. Well, they had two priests. Stand right here. Give me one right there. One over here. And one over here. Can you girls back up just a little bit right there? No, can you back up, let her back up, Margie, and you go toward her. I'm trying to make some room right here. Back up a little bit more, Kelly. Now, this is the cherubims right here. This was what was on top of the mercy seat. Now, you girls can go sit down. I just want you to use a picture right here just for a second. This is a box. There was, <coughs> you guys come over here just a second. Stand right over here. There was a ring. Am I, am, I, am I pointing this out enough where you can tell what I'm doing? You back up right there. Now you can turn around and watch me over here just for a second. I'm sorry, guys. This box had four rings in it. One here, one here, on this side, one here, and one here. And they took these, hold that, Sean. They took these poles, and they slid these poles in these rings so that the priest could carry the ark on their shoulders. And in time that ark was transported, that's how it was carried, by four priests. That's how David messed up. He put it on a cart. Now, all right, guys, two guys on that side. Two guys on this side. Here. Now, I want you guys listen to this. Now, here's what I did the, the other day. The whole world, look right here at me, boys. The whole world depends on you. I don't have time to go, time to, go to Joshua chapter number 3 and show you how the children of Israel are this close to the promised land, and they're not going to get in the promised land unless you four boys do your job right. And if you don't do your job right, everybody else is left on the outside. So you've got a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. So now how they carried this ark was they put it on their shoulders. Well, let's, let me, okay, now look at me. Okay, we're going to go that way. We're going that way. Scoot down some so we don't run over top of this flower. Over this way. Oh, over this way. Come over this way, Bill. Now, there's three million people back behind you back there. You're going to step in the River Jordan. Because the promised land's over here. They can't swim. They can't build bridges. And the River Jordan, chapter, chapter number 3 of Joshua, is overflowing all of its banks all this time of year. So they can't get across. The only way they can get across, according to the word of the Lord, is, is when you guys step in that Jordan River, that Jordan's going to split. And in Joshua chapter number 3, it says it backed up all the way to the city of Adam. But the key is, You've got to carry it the right way. If you don't carry it the right way, they can't get across. Okay, you ready? Wait, 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 w
Well, this way, this way. <laughs> You've seen this before, haven't you? Okay, let me borrow somebody else. <laughs> Who's never carried this before? Have you seen it before? James? Come here. New priest. Just give him about 10 minutes right here. New priest. Okay, now, okay, back again. You guys got a lot of weight on your response on your shoulders. Three million people behind you can't get across unless you do it right. All you got to do is step in the River Jordan. You step in the River Jordan, the water is going to be like the Red Sea. It's going to back up. And all you got to do is stand there until everybody gets across. Are you ready? Let's go. Up, 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 up. You're wrong. You got it. You got it. You got it really bad wrong. Now, because you got it really bad wrong, those guys over there can't get across. Do you know what you're doing wrong? You're carrying it wrong. See, that's what we do with the presence of God. That's what we do with the mercy of the Lord. We carry it wrong. You know what amazes me? On Raiders of the Lost Ark, they've got a picture. You've seen it. Hey, they've got a picture where they're carrying the ark the right way. It's amazing to me that Hollywood knows more about how to carry the ark of the covenant than the church does. Okay, first of all, here's, here's how this works. No, no, no. I'll show you. I'll show you. So you've got you to have somebody over you to show you. you. You just can't fiddle around here. See, that's what we're fiddling around in the church. There's no apostolic oversight. They're just fiddling around. So here's what it's got to do. First of all, you two guys are facing the wrong way. Turn around. No, no, see? No, see? Now, I'm not trying to be funny. I just want to show you something. No, no, no. See, you still ain't. You stand right there. Okay. Jack, you turn around. Now put the pole on your shoulder. There you go. See? Now, the reason it is this way, the reason these priests had to walk this way is because if he turns around, turn back around, turn back around, they have got their backs to the mercy seat. You understand what I'm saying? Their back is turned on mercy. See, today, you know what I did? I was turning my back on a young boy. That's never the heart of God. So they've got to face the mercy seat. Their eyes have always got to be on the mercy seat. Turn back around. Now, sometimes when you go backwards, you're really going forwards. What these guys have got to do is got to depend on these two guys looking through the mercy seat to guide them. Am I boring y'all? No. Now, now, are you ready? See, now three million people back there waiting on. Are you ready? Let's go. Up, 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 up. Still wrong. I'm gonna give y'all a shot this time. What's wrong this time? See, God's a stickler. We, he don't hap hance anything. Do anybody know what's wrong now? Huh? No, we're going this way. Watch this. Watch this now. Oh, first, let me, let me ask you all. Now, if you've seen this, don't say anything. Do anybody that hadn't seen this, do they know what the problem is? That's not it. There's something really bad wrong up to this point. We got these guys looking the right way. These guys are looking the right way. But, huh? Listen to what he says. Flip it over. Now, do you know why the pole goes on the outside shoulder and the, the mind, the eyes, the mouth, the heart, the lungs, the stomach, the knees, the feet? It's all inside where the ark is. Put it back the other way. Here, Eyes, ears, mouth, heart, lungs, reproductive organs, knees, everything is on outside of the mercy. So everything they're going to reproduce is outside the mercy seat. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the pole goes on the other side. Now his eyes, his mind, his nose, his mouth, his ears, his heart, his lungs, his stomach, which speaks of his motives. Paul said one time, I know who your God is. It's your belly. He wasn't talking about the food they eat. His motives, his reproductive organs, his knees when he bows to pray, his feet when they walk, they're all inside the pole. 
which means everything about these priests is mercy, 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 mercy. He sees mercy. He thinks mercy. He hears mercy. He talks mercy. He breathes mercy. His heart beats mercy. His motives are mercy motivated. His reproductive organ speaks of a reproduction of mercy. His knees, when they bow, it's a, it's a mercy. It's humility. His feet is a mercy walk. This is a mercy motivated campaign. And mercy is what's going to bring those people from point A to point B. And the minute these guys step in that River Jordan that's unpredictable, the River Jordan, ha it has no chance, has no other option but to obey the word of the Lord because guess what mercy stepped in mercy is the most powerful force you will ever find in the earth and it seems like it's a lost power because man I'm telling you what you get your head outside that pole just leave your you keep yours right there you get your head outside that pole right there you you're gonna think some crazy stuff toward people Just like me thinking about that kid. He's a kid. I'm a pastor. Now, when these boys move now, God moves. And how does God move? He moves through mercy. Mercy. Now, you guys can sit down. Let me, let me show you one other thing right here. I don't know if it made any sense to you or not. Let me take a pose. Do, do, you guys can sit down now. Watch this right here. You guys go ahead and sit down. We're finished with moving the ark. That's, that's all I want to do with that right there. But I want to show you something else right here. See these two staves? It was two poles, two sticks. Watch this. Right there it is. One other thing I want to say about this. That ark stepped in that river Jordan, and when it did, the water backed up already the city Adam. Do you know almost to the exact same, same spot 15, 1600 years later John's down the river Jordan almost in the same identical spot Perry, baptizing some boys and do you know John let me say this about John the Baptist John was hard, John was tough he was a Old Testament prophet he was tough but all of a sudden something walked up over the brow of the hill that had a different look to it walked right down in the middle of that river Jordan. And guess what it is? It's, not, it's, it's the real ark. It's the real thing. It's the real deal. Let me say it to you this way. It's not only the Son of God. It is the ark itself. And it walked right down in that river Jordan, looked John right in the eyes, and he said, John, it is absolutely necessary to fulfill all righteousness in God, right things in God, for you to baptize me. John, knowing where he was, John, knowing his attitude to some degree, he looked at Jesus and said, listen, man, I ain't no way in the world I can do this. Let me say, maybe he's thinking about when Uzzah touched the ark that time. He's thinking, you know what? My motives are not pure. My motives are not right. Some of, some of the things I've said have not come from a heart of mercy, but a heart of heart and maybe he's afraid to touch Jesus but Jesus looked at him and said man I like this part right it's alright to touch me this ark you can touch instead of getting harsh punishment you will get mercy every single time and man he grabbed Jesus and took him down in that water and let me tell you something Jesus came up went up on the creek bank on the river bank and what came down out of heaven was the Holy Ghost like a dove and the heaven drove back and here's what the father said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased with one minute let me talk to you about Barabbas how do you think Barabbas felt when Jesus was led down that sank the scala right into the arms of the Jewish people that led him away to be crucified, knowing that he was this close of getting what Jesus got. Barabbas' his name, is, it's Barabbas. It means Bar, B-A-R, Abbas. Bar means son of. Abbas means father, which means he was the son of a father. But where was his father? Let me just say, you ever heard this? He's a son of a... Let me say it to you this way. The son of God exchanged places with the son of a... The son of God, the innocent one, exchanged places with the son of a who was not innocent. 
There's only one word you can lay to that one. That is mercy. 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 I tell you what Barabbas did when they led Jesus down that Sancta Scala and those Roman soldiers grabbed him, him beat to a pulp. They led him off to Calvary. I'll tell you what Barabbas did. Here's what he did. He went, I can't tell you the times I went like this. And the thing of it is, you can get up every day and go, because his mercy is renewed every single day. <laughs> I drove off watching that boy back through my mirror walk off through the parking lot to shop right I, walk, I watched him and I thought Lord I hope that boy has this experience because when I crossed those railroad tracks looking back at him I went like this Whatever happened to Barabbas? I don't know. But let me tell you what. He wasn't a son of us anymore. He was a son of God because of the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a murderer. He was a uh, he, he was guilty of treason. He, he was guilty of it all. But Jesus made the exchange. The cross was never a place of punishment. The cross was a place where love was poured out. And probably the first time in Barabbas' life when he looked at Jesus, he had to wonder, oh my gosh, why? There's really no explanation for love except he just loves you. He just loves you. If me and you'd been standing where Jesus was, we'd been screaming and kicking and saying, take him, take him, take him. They led Jesus down those steps. It's called the Sancta Scala. When Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, the Romans so, so uh, idolized those steps that they carried them all the way back to Rome. 1525, there's a Jesuit priest by the name of Martin Luther had been sent to Rome on some errands. And in the process of of crawling up those steps, same steps that Jesus come down, he's going up, praying repentance prayers on every step. God visited him on those steps <laughs> and said, the just shall live by faith. Martin Luther become the great reformer. Whether you're going up those steps or coming down those steps, it all comes back to one word, mercy. Somewhere you're on the steps. And all it takes is just recognizing and just taking your deep breath, going, <sighs> We got another chance. We got another chance. Because of God's <coughs> great mercy. I used to think if you give people too much mercy, they take advantage of you. Mm -mm. Mercy is what set them free. Tonight, I just want you to do one thing. Gerald, if you can come right here just for a second. Just take you a big, deep breath. <sighs> While Jesus was losing his breath, Barabbas was getting his. They led Jesus down that Sancta Scala, took him down the Via Della Rosa in a pathway not much longer than that with people spitting on him. This is Feast of Passover. Everybody's in Jerusalem. Millions of people. The whole world's there. All nationalities are there. And his back is beat open like a new plowed field. His head's busted open. He's, he's, got, he's bleeding out of every orifice in his body. And every nationality, every disease, is, let me say it, every disease is represented there mouth carries more bacteria than any part of your body does. And when they spit on him, every disease is being ingested into the body of Jesus.
So when he climbs up on that cross at Calvary, watch this, guess what he took with him? Every sickness and disease known to man. And what yet wasn't there, he summons there. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all, King James says, I'll draw all, all men unto me. The original language says, I shall draw all judgment unto me. He brought all of it, sucked it right on up into him. Took care of it all. Right there on the cross. So by the time he got to the top of the hill, he was baptized in saliva. Man, what a wonderful Jesus. From the time he left there till he got to Calvary, his breaths were numbered. has become unnumbered. See, that's what mercy will do. Mercy will add to your breaths. And I'm so glad for the mercy of the Lord. Before there was ever grace, there was mercy. And now the grace of God shows up in my life and teaches me how to accept that mercy. It takes the grace of God to look at somebody and extend them mercy. You can't have mercy without grace. See, what this does is it's the most freeing thing you'll ever experience in your life. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. Before there was ever freedom, there was love. Love's what produced the freedom. And love produced the freedom through forgiveness by mercy. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, here's what I say to everybody in this room, those listening by way of the web, take you another breath. Close your eyes just for a second. You know, after Jesus got through there with Barabbas and Jesus took Barabbas' place, man may, man may have labeled Barabbas one way, but God didn't. He was a son of God. Not the son of. Because Barabbas' father's never recognized. But tonight we can recognize it. He's not a bastard. He has a father got a father and he is a good good father stand up tonight just for a second I, I love you man I want you to know that you're not going to be known by the worst thing you've ever done in your life in the eyes of God God don't even know what you're talking about you're forgiven father I bless every person in this room help us teach us to carry that mercy the right way Father, just just help us love. Help us love like the boy on the bus today. Help us love those somewhere in that man's life, that kid's life. Something's happened. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you for your mercy. Can you say thank you, Lord, for your mercy? I hope you have the best week you ever had in your life. I hope to, I hope tonight before you lay down, it's just the next few hours before your eyes hit the pillow, some of the best hours you've ever had in your life. Those that are sick in your body, be healed. Chris, be healed. We believe the Lord to heal Chris. Anybody else in this room that's got sickness in your body, be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Can you say amen? Love them somebody there and say, be merciful. God bless you. Have a good night.